G'day, and welcome to another Space Engineers Survival Tutorial. This time, we're going to be building a large ship. This tutorial is going to run a little differently to my previous videos. It will be a bit of a warts and all look at how I go about designing a ship, in order to avoid the dreaded brick. I'll show you every mistake, revision, and step along the way to getting something that is functional and, well, looks at least passable. To do this, the lesson will run across a few videos. In this first video, we'll look at building the core of the ship in a way that helps avoid the brick look, and in the following tutorial, we'll do some of the revision of the armor, adding some extra functionality, and also coloring the ship. To start out, I added a large platform to the side of the base, so we have a nice area on which to build. As usual, we'll clear out the G menu and add a few necessary blocks. The blocks to add for the start of this build are the hydrogen tank, refinery, assembler, small cargo container, reactor, landing gear, and the basic light armor block. I like to start with these blocks due to their size and function. If you place your core blocks in an interesting layout, you'll probably find that your finished ship will have a unique design as well. We can use the base for the stability of the build by first extending a column of blocks three high, then one block across. This will allow us to attach a landing gear directly to the station, and if we leave that first column attached to the base throughout, then the ship will draw power from the base until it has its own. This can be super handy if you need conveyors to be able to get uranium into your reactors. With this ship design, I was thinking that if I make it U-shaped, it's definitely not gonna look like a brick. So the front of the base, i.e. the hangar entrance, is going to be the front of the ship. Now, to make it easy to place both sides of the front level, I'm gonna build a bridge of about nine blocks across and then place down another landing gear on that side. And that'll constitute the front of the ship. This bridge is temporary. It's just to help me guide where I'm going to place things. Use scaffolding whenever you think it's going to help you. Building in survival does add its own challenges, particularly when you're trying to design. So take scaffolding and things like that whenever you need to. This ship is sort of going to have an axis of symmetry and that axis of symmetry is going to divide a block in two. That means I need an odd number between the two landing gears. This is why I actually counted out the blocks instead of just going Meh, 10, that'll work. When designing a large ship, I like to put down the largest blocks first. These are the things that guide how much space you're going to need and in survival, you can't really just delete, copy paste and all these other things that you can do in creative. So if you're designing in survival, this can be really helpful. The largest blocks on this ship are going to be the hydrogen tanks. These are three by three by three cubes and we're going to need a lot of them. We'll build two rows of three each, extending from directly above where the two landing gear are. The idea being that those landing gear are going to support the weight of the tanks and imagining that Space Engineers has some degree of structural integrity, I find it helps with my designs for survival ships. With how big these are, and placing three of them in a row on each side, you can get an idea of how this ship is going to take shape. The cockpit and all of the refinery section will be towards the rear. We'll have the two sets of tanks leading on either side. With the tanks laid out as we need them, we're going to need some way to fill them. and. We can't just put ice directly in them. We need to fill them with hydrogen from an oxygen generator. So, rather than trying to fill three enormous tanks with just one generator, let's put one on each side. Let's grab it out of the G menu and attach one to the back of each set. While we're in the G menu, let's quickly grab the conveyor blocks as well, as we're about to need them too. I'd like to place a conveyor tube between the hydrogen tanks and the generators, just in case I want to add something in there later. But unfortunately, I've forgotten interior plates, so we'll be back in a second. Pop those conveyor tubes in place and then attach the oxygen generators to the back of them. To avoid the back of the ship looking completely square, why don't we taper it a little bit? A way to do this is to use the conveyor tubes to gradually move in a couple of blocks before we start putting the rest of the refinery and assembler complex into place. A convenient upside of using conveyor blocks in this way 
is that it allows you flexibility later to add extra functionality into the design. You may find that you want to add extra oxygen tanks, extra cargo storage, heck, you may even want to move your bridge later when you want to do other iterations of the design. And having more conveyor blocks put in place gives you that flexibility without having to start everything from scratch. Designing new ships in survival uses a lot of hydrogen. What I like to do is place down a few blocks, come back out, get an overall view of the ship, go back in, place a few more. As you can see, that's how I'm gonna build these conveyor tubes to get a feel of where they should be. My idea for this ship is for it to be a sort of staging post, not to be a cargo carrier or anything in particular, but just something to replace the lander in a more grandiose fashion so that you can do everything a little bit with it. So we don't need huge amounts of cargo. What we're going to do is place just a couple of small cargo containers on it. If at a later stage you find you need a lot more, add onto it, build an extra section. See if you can continue the design in a new and more interesting way. And now for the next challenging part. How on earth are we going to fit a refinery into an oddly symmetrical ship? Since this is a two by four by two sized block, it's not going to line up neatly along our lines of symmetry if we only have one of them. But I only plan to have one of them. So one of the things I like to do in designs is have the rough overall thing seem symmetrical but much like the Millennium Falcon, have a little bit extra on one side, have a little bit different on the other side. This creates extra interest and further helps you avoid the brick. Having built the conveyor tubes in from both sides, the refinery no longer fits. So I will have to remove one of the conveyor tubes from one side and I don't want this ship to be extra tall at the back. So I'll need to make sure that the refinery is at most the level of the current conveyor blocks. The scaffolding came in handy to measure how many blocks wide I actually had. And then it's just a matter of rotating the refinery until it fits like I want it to. Flying around with the ghost form, I can have a look at it from each side and just reassure myself that I've got the refinery how I want it. Building these things up and tearing them down is doable, but it is a bit of a pain in the butt. So I'd rather avoid it. So taking another step back, looking at all the conveyor tubes, there's an opportunity here for where we could sneak in the assembler without having to change any of our current design in any large way. With the shape of the conveyors at the right hand side of the refinery, we could actually put an assembler in there. So that's what we'll do. We'll skip through the next bit of glancing around as I decide how I'm going to put on the rear landing gear. It's going to go underneath the refinery in the dead center of the ship. To do this, I'm going to need to place some light armor blocks underneath the refinery so that they're two blocks above the landing pad. It's really important that I left that initial bridge intact because if I'd ground it down by now, I wouldn't be able to place the landing gear. Space engineers would start treating the two as separate grids and therefore the landing gear would not fit even though it visually appears to. Like with the points where I go and have a brief overview of the whole ship, there are often points like this where because these components are in the center and will be very difficult to weld later, as well as my brain just finding it easier to design around fully completed blocks, I go away, I weld all these components and then I come back and I do the next phase. That's what we'll do. This video is already going to be a little bit longer than I'd like. So I'll skip through most of the welding. You guys know what it's all like anyway, but I'll make sure I show the end result before we go on to any further design steps. And now you can see the internals of the ship in their muted gray matte boring glory. Right. Well, now we can remove the bridge as in the bridge of scaffolding that's connecting the two front parts of the ship. As a side note, I probably shouldn't have done this yet. Although my plans allow for access to the reactor cores directly, it still makes it a little more difficult to manage things later as I lose power to the ship. And it was something I mentioned earlier that we shouldn't do. 
So yeah, that happened. But as I said, this was a warts and all look and you'll see the mistakes as well as the design process as we go along. And now it's time for thrusters. I quickly placed a couple of conveyor tubes on the front of each of the pairs of tanks. And then we're going to place some hydrogen thrusters on the front of those. The purpose of the conveyor tubes is to add space to allow armor blocks to go on later so that we can do a bit of styling. For the upward thrusters, there's not really much room so we'll just connect these straight to the tanks and we'll work with what styling we can manage in that space. At a rough guess, four of them is not going to be adequate to lift this thing off the ground on a full gravity world. So we'll add an extra two at the rear and that should do the trick. These ones are going to be a bit more difficult to place because we're going to need conveyors coming down on one side to create a conveyor tube that matches the port on the refinery at this height. Neither of the available nearby conveyor ports look like they're in the best position to figure this thing out. Either way we do it, we're going to end up with a large snake of conveyor tubes, but we'll just pick one for now. If we have to change it later, so be it, we'll do that. It's a lot easier to pick what's going to work best once a few more pieces of the ship are in place. With the final upward thruster in place at the end of its conveyor snake, we'll go on and we'll place the left and right as well as the downward thrust. It's a good idea as we go along to check how much hydrogen you got left in your tanks, as falling from this height can be dangerous. This might come up later. For the remaining directional thrusters, we'll attach these directly to the hydrogen tanks. I think at this stage, the armor will look better if everything's directly connected, rather than having just the downward left and right ones separated from the tank by a block. What I said with the reverse thrusters was that having the extra space would help with armor. I think with the circumferential thrusters, it'll be more helpful this way. But if it doesn't work out, we can always change it later, right? That's why I always end up doing iterative design. Because it'd be boring if I got it right the first time. There's a final remaining thrust direction that we haven't dealt with yet, and that's forward thrust. This will be managed with a large thruster. I'm not going to place this yet, as I want to get a bit of an idea of whether I'm going to need more space for the cockpit area. So that's what we're going to build next. This will need to be pressurized because this ship should be able to make it all the way up into space so that we can go start exploring asteroids with more than just our little orbital ship we built earlier. Starting from our landing gear at the rear, we'll move up a block and then we'll extend a row of blocks out to where the hydrogen tanks on each side finish and then we'll extend out to each side. This area will be the basis for our cockpit and will probably end up being the floor of the cockpit area. This needs to include things like the med bay and access to cargo, reactors, etc. It should also include an airlock if we can manage to fit one in. To match the external design of the ship, I want the actual cockpit position to be sort of recessed a little bit. So the center of this cockpit base, floor, whatever you want to call it, needs to be back a block further than the front of it. We'll need a door if we're planning on pressurizing this, so we'll use the sliding door as that's my preferred one from the vanilla set of doors. To me it looks a bit weird having it directly next to the tanks, so we'll move it out a block further. In front of the door we're going to need a ramp leading down to the ground. This way, on gravity, if we run out of hydrogen, we'll still be able to get back on board the ship without having to wrangle some form of scaffolding thing when we really should have just had a ramp that reached the ground. The base pieces of this ramp should be made out of heavy armor. Light armor is pretty soft and sometimes your landing won't be as smooth as you'd like it to be. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to place these pieces yet. We'll need to lift the ship off the ground to get some clearance between the ship and the base and then we'll be able to put those in at that stage. Using some light armor slopes, we'll build that inset part for the cockpit that I was talking about earlier. At this stage, I don't worry too much about exactly whether I've got the right slope or anything like that. I just try and put a general idea down so then I can come back and I can fine tune it and adjust it later. As you may have guessed from my previous tutorials, I like to have a functional ship first and a pretty ship later. Stepping back for another view of the ship from a bit further out, 
I'm reasonably happy with our progress so far. The next things I'd like to do is to flesh out the shape of the cockpit a little bit more. First things first, build a front wall so we can get an idea of where the cockpit glass will need to go and how much room we've got for the other components that we want to put inside this space. Keeping things relatively simple for now, we'll just replicate the row of blocks immediately beneath that one. When you're thinking about your overall ship design, it helps to have a concept in your mind of exactly what you want to have in a space. And on grander designs, how many spaces you want to fit and how they're going to be arranged so that you don't end up with a block that doesn't look right. In this case, I'm trying to think about how to include in the cockpit everything I want and also make it airtight. I'll probably get this wrong the first time or maybe in the first few times. There are a few blocks that I'm never quite certain about and sometimes you just forget a bit. If, like me, you like having air tightness on and you like the challenge of designing around that, it's worth having those rebuilds a few times until you get it right. Just so that you can see that depressurization happen when something goes bad. Or just messing with your friends because they forget to depressurize a room and then go flying off into space. Always entertaining. So in this space that surrounds the cockpit, I want to have a med bay and I want to have access to a few important components. I want to have access to the cargo system so that we can get ice into the oxygen generators to be able to refill our hydrogen tanks. I want to have access to a reactor so that I can put fuel in even if I can't get access to the conveyor system because we've run out of power. And I want to have a med bay that is actually connected to the conveyor system so that it's oxygen and hydrogen can be piped into your suit whenever you use it. All of this has to be fitted into a place that's pretty cozy and is about to become even more cozy by me having to place blocks to make it airtight. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go around the edges and find any blocks that I don't think are airtight and make sure that there are armor blocks surrounding those areas and being contiguous with one another so that everything is airtight. As I said before, I'll probably get this wrong the first time and have to do a few adjustments later, but that's okay. That's to be expected. I liked the idea of having armor slopes leading to each of the access points on the cargo system. However, the position of the oxygen generators means that this isn't possible because I would have a hole in my front of my ship. So I don't want that. Instead, we'll have to build blocks straight across and maybe even cover up this port altogether if that's what works better down the line. In addition to looking at your ship from further back, it can be useful to walk through your ship like you would once it's complete. It can give you a bit of a concept of where things are located and where things might look good. There are certain things that probably shouldn't be together, like reactors and living quarters. At least in very large ships, that should probably be the case or a consideration that might help you design in a way that's interesting and varied. A convenient use for the two ports on the oxygen generators is a vent. We're going to need to pressurize this area, so why don't we put a couple on here? One for each oxygen generator. And now that we've got a rough layout of our cockpit area, let's try and work out how to build an airlock. These can be a little bit difficult, particularly when you've got space constraints. But I think if we offset the two doors by just one block, the vent that we've attached to the oxygen generator on this side of the ship should be able to pressurize and depressurize this airlock. And the angled light armor block that's on the exit of the door should sit nicely and allow us to still pass while maintaining the air tightness of the space that our actual cockpit seat is in. Viewing the airlock from above, that corner piece doesn't look so great and I don't think it'll look so great once it's finished. So let's remove it and replace it with a full block. One of the last remaining major ship systems that we haven't put in yet is power. I'm normally a big fan of making a flamboyant, stylized reactor room on large ships, but I don't think this build is really going to fit that so I might just go for practical instead. For most uses that we're going to have for this ship, 
having a single reactor is probably going to be enough. But just in case, I'm going to put two on. And I think the top of the, each of the small cargo containers might be the best spot. One downside of these reactors is I'm not sure that they're airtight. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're not. And that may create some problems with our build down the line. There are two features we've yet to include in our cockpit area. One of them is the cockpit. We need a way to actually control the vessel. The other is a med bay. If we're taking a large ship up into space and something goes wrong, like, I don't know, forgetting to put on your inertial dampeners and flying straight into an asteroid and going smush against the side of it, you probably want somewhere to respawn where you can find your ship easily. And where is easier than actually respawning on the ship itself. So for me, any large ship worth its salt should try and fit a med bay somewhere on board. We already had a spot pre-marked for the cockpit, so we'll plop that there. And then the med bay, we'll place it near the rear so that we have access to the conveyor ports that are on the refinery. We want to connect the med bay up to the conveyor system so that we get both oxygen and hydrogen whenever we recharge at the med bay. For the two pieces of conveyor that we need above the refinery, we'll use conveyor junctions. These are airtight, so that will help us maintain our airtightness within our cockpit area. The final piece we need to fit into our cockpit area is the piece of glass that's going to sit in front of the control station. Since we've got two slopes leading up to where we want to place the glass, we're not going to be able to attach any glass directly where we need it. The edges of blocks don't allow you to connect to, so we're going to need to figure out another way to support it. Conveniently, we've seen a solution to this problem already. If we use a light armor 2x1x1 by one by one slope tip, we'll be able to create a support for the glass above it. You can see that this is exactly what's used to create the support for the large piece of glass on the front of the atmospheric lander we came down on. When you're placing glass, my personal preference is to always have the dark side facing outward, kind of makes sense because you want to be able to see from the inside out and less so from the outside in. And you can normally work out which way this is from the preview window. Unfortunately, I'm not carrying any girders, so we'll be back in a second once we've got them. And then I'll be able to place that piece of glass. With that placed, we're up to a stage where I like to weld everything to see where I'm at and get a better idea of what to build next. We'll take a look at some more of this build in the next video. See you then!